All right, it's been two years since living in Bangkok, Thailand. This is going to be an ultimate guide on everything you need to know about traveling here, on staying here. We are in beautiful Rama 9 right now. This is one of the best places to actually live. So the first thing you should know before even coming is how much to actually spend. On a daily budget, I would recommend at least $60. $30 would afford you a very nice, modern, luxury condo. $20 for food, for drinks, exploring activities, and another $10 for transportation. So honestly, that's pretty on the low end. If you're actually gonna go out and drink and party and like go to massages and do shopping, I would recommend like $100. So Bangkok is cheap, but it's not like dirt cheap, you know? This is Jod Ferris Night Market. This is one of the most popular areas for uh, tourists and just to get a nice bite to eat. So for budget, if you're gonna stay here for a month, I would recommend at least $1,500. And honestly, that's on the lower end. A moderate budget would be around 2,000 to have some like wiggle room. And I'd say like 2,000 is very, very comfortable. By the way, I made a full guide on how much it costs to actually live in Bangkok. Check that out right there. The next thing you should know is about visas. If you're from one of these 64 countries, you can basically enter Thailand without a visa. And while you're in Thailand, you can actually extend your visa to a multitude of different visa options. All right, now once you're at the airport, you're going to want to get a SIM card. Now with the SIM card, you can get True or AIS. Those are the top major providers and you'll pretty much have coverage everywhere. I recommend getting the unlimited data plan and getting however long you're actually going to stay here. Then you're going to want to download these three apps. Google Translate, it's an absolute must here. The Grab app, it's basically the Uber of everything here. Order food, you can order taxis, motorbikes. Another transportation app, which is actually cheaper than Grab, is going to be Bolt. So whenever you're going to book a taxi, I would highly recommend using an app instead of like booking a random taxi on the street because a lot of them, they might overcharge you or they might not know where they're going and there's a language barrier issue. So using an app is definitely recommended. And lastly, the next app you have to download is Line. If you wanna to talk to anybody, it's typically done through Line. Speaking of transportation, these guys in the orange jackets here, whenever you need a motorbike, you can book these guys. These guys charge a little bit of pricey, but they're not the worst. The tuk-tuks are generally going to be the worst prices. All right, we are here at Central Ramen 9. Our barbecue pork bun. All right, just took care of business, got some food. Now we're heading back to the condo. So at this point, you're at the airport, you're going to need some Thai bot. Before even arriving at the airport, I'd recommend having some cash, physical cash in hand. That way you don't have to deal with the withdrawal fees. What I would recommend is going to a store like Super Rich. This place in particular is gonna have one of the best rates. Speaking of properties, let's talk about accommodation. I would recommend either a hotel or an Airbnb. So back to what I was saying, with accommodation, I recommend an Airbnb or a hotel. I'd say around 50 to 60 to $40 around that area is gonna afford you a very nice accommodation that's gonna get you a nice, beautiful luxury pool, a fitness gym, and a pretty small living space around 35 square meters or so. Something like that is gonna cost you around $1,000 to $1,500 a month. There are so many different options here, but one of the most important things is booking a condo that is near the MRT or the BTS, and that's basically Bangkok's transportation system. Next, let's talk about where to actually stay. Now, I recommend Sukhumvit Road, but Sukhumvit, that is a huge, huge road that pretty much spans across Bangkok. So specifically within the Sukhumvit Road, I recommend staying anywhere between Siam all the way to Prakanong. You're gonna be pretty much close to all of the action, all of the restaurants, malls, nightlife, massages, the red light district, rooftops, like anything that you basically want to come to Bangkok for, you're gonna find it within that road. So don't make the mistake of assuming Sukhumvit is like, where you should stay. No, it depends like where in Sukhumvit we should stay. So I recommend anywhere Siam to Prakanong. All right, I am pretty hungry guys. I'm gonna try to find somewhere to sit down and eat this. Let's see, this place is so huge. There's just so many options. All right guys, here's everything we got today. We have this barbecue pork steamed bun. We got some chicken and some beef here. But the main dish here is this uh, green curry with chicken. Oh, this looks so good. By the way, on the topic of food, the last thing any Thai person recommends you eat is Pad Thai. For some reason, people think of Thai food as Pad Thai. Thai people don't even eat Pad Thai. You gotta eat the soups, you gotta eat the curries, and then you also have to try all the seafoods. And lastly, another food recommendation is gonna be Pad Kap Pao. 
Now, once you're actually in Bangkok, there's so many things to do here. I'm just gonna name a huge list of everything that you should do. You should go to Street Food Night Market. Basically has a bunch of really good food for extremely cheap and it's just its whole vibe. And, and you can also shop for things like clothes or like souvenirs there too. Next would be getting a Thai massage. Next is Muay Thai. You wanna get some Muay Thai training in. If you really want the authentic Thai experience, I would recommend going to a bunch of shopping malls and it'll really showcase how luxurious Bangkok is and how modern it is. Next, let's talk about nightlife. I would recommend going to Tachuka rooftop going to Kelsan. it is so touristy and so packed there it's gonna probably be a wild night if you go there you're gonna probably get hung over the next day if you're single and you're interested I would maybe check out the red light district either at Nana Plaza or Soy Cowboy it's definitely an experience to see for yourself like kind of what that side of Bangkok looks like. Just know that you are prey and they are predators there. You're in their territory. They are going to hawk you down. I would recommend checking out all the hot touristy spots, going to a Buddhist temple, going to Wat Arun temple. So yeah, just really trying to pack in as much as you can. And the last bit of advice I'd recommend is learning like 10 words in Thai. Basically all the greetings and navigation, like go left, go straight, go right. Thank you, you're welcome never mind or it's okay i think the best way to learn thai is actually to form some relationships with thai locals here either through dating or just friendships they will teach you thai so unbelievably quick that's how i've become very conversationally equipped with thai is because of my thai girlfriend but yeah i think that's pretty much all the advice let me know if this was helpful by leaving a like and commenting any questions you might have or you can contact me on instagram at i'm paul lee hope you guys like this video and i'll see you in the next one